folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Are you excited? Because I know I am. Because I'm going to review the very third movie of the Peanuts Movies Collection. That's right, because it just came out recently for the very first time on DVD after its last VHS release in 1995. And it's the 1977 film that turned out to be one of my favorites next to a boy named Charlie Brown called Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown! That's right. It finally came out on DVD on February 10th, 2015. Which this film, of course, came out on August 24th 1977. And like the last movie, Snoopy Come Home, it wasn't a smash hit as they were expecting it to be, mostly because since it came out in the late summer, this was due to the fact that Star Wars was one of the most popular films of all time that it dominated the box office all the way, which leads to this movie, you know, left in the dust because Paramount had a hard time trying to find an actual summer release for this movie. And this is also, of course, the first movie to be produced and distributed by Paramount Pictures. You know, since uh, Cinema Center Films had, had fought for bankruptcy and, and closed down after that. So anyway. But this is uh, the new DVD release that's in a slipcover. So you can tell how embossed it looks. You can even check on the back. Yep. <laughs> and once you take it out, it comes in a red case. A red DVD case. And a red uh, gray DVD as well. So, Well, it's better than nothing, I guess. And... Like the last two films that I just reviewed, this DVD release is also bare bones. Except this one has the trailer, and the only trailer that they ever have for a special release. And it's a very rare trailer too because I found the original TV spot that was filmed in 16mm and, and the colors were faded. So anyway, when I saw the trailer for this one, I noticed that there are some scenes that were alternate compared to the actual film itself. Like for instance, there was that one scene when Charlie Brown and the rest of the boys were playing tug of war with the bullies. You notice that uh, when the bullies had pulled the rope, yeah, it leaves to Charlie Brown and the rest of the boys as well as Snoopy to, to land right into the mud, but they weren't covered all over like like they did in the film which I know Snoopy and Woodstock started laughing at them <laughs> so yeah I noticed there was an alternate take there so, it's just kind of a shame because I would have had loved to see deleted scenes of some of the alternate takes and all those other ones but oh well it's better than nothing I guess yeah and of course you know, it does say first time on DVD digitally remastered Yes, the film is definitely digitally remastered, and it's in widescreen the way it was meant to be seen. But I, I really love it, man. It, it became one of my favorite Charlie Brown film of all time, next to A Boy Named Charlie Brown. Because I never got tired of this movie. I remember renting this movie from Blockbuster. I even saw it on TV, on Channel 13, and then also TNT and Cartoon Network. Boomerang, and even ABC Family, yep, they've been playing the movie ever since on TV. But it never got an official DVD release until now, and I'm happy. Because I own the VHS tape all this time, along with all the other Charlie Brown movies. So, yeah. So, anyway, uh, let's get to the film, because I'm, I'm very excited over it. Um, the entire cast, basically, is the same cast they use from the last TV special that... CBS had released which is called You're a Good Sport Charlie Brown and here's what it stars 
Duncan Watson as Charlie Brown, Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock, Gail M. Davis as Sally Brown, Melanie Kahn as Lucy Van Pelt, Liam Martin as Linus Van Pelt, Laura Plantin as Pepper and Patty, Jimmy Arantz as Marcy, Greg Felton as Shoulder, Tom Muller as Bully, as well as Franklin, Kurt Jude as the second Bully, Jordan Warren as the third Bully, and Jackson Beck as the Ferocious Brutus the Cat. It's produced once again by Bill Melendez and Lee Mendelson with Charles M. Schultz. It's written by Charles M. Schultz and it's directed by Bill Melendez and Phil Wilman. And also the music is done by Ed Bogus, you know, taking over for for the late great Ben Scaraldi. So let's get right to it. The movie begins when Charlie Brown and the rest of the Peanuts gang on a school bus along with Snoopy and Woodstock on their motorcycle bike as they headed off into the mountains just to get to a summer camp known as Camp Remote. But first, the school bus had laid out a flat tire after Sally had pointed out that that big girl you know, right next to that little kid was giving her the tongue. And she got so upset that she wanted to go punch her lights out, which she tried, but it didn't seem to work out. Then after the tire was fixed, they wound up going straight to a local market just to get some more goodies and other stuff, you know, before they headed out all the way just to get to camp. Well, once they try to do that, Charlie Brown wants up getting left behind by the bus, thanks to that stupid driver. <laughs> Brown wants up going inside Snoopy's motorbike you know, with Woodstock, so they drove all the way, giving him a wild ride, which he was going completely out of control, you know, trying to get all the way straight to where the bus is. But then suddenly he wants up landing into the field where you know, all the bulls or or cows are, are ra running around, and and one of them were about to chase them around until they finally went straight to the mountains and into the the trees, and then finally headed off to Camp Remote. Yeah, and once they finally got there, Charlie Brown started feeling very nauseous and dizzy that he wants up bumping into the bullies. Yeah, all three of the bullies along with their ferocious cat named Brutus. So basically they're just expecting them to become, as they said to them, that they were the number one of the group since they won every single contest in the role. Which I know, of course, they started cheating at anything they do. Well, they started talking about a lot of crap um, in front of them until Linus finally came to the rescue by using his blanket and and whipping them <laughs> together by telling them to go back. And I remember that line where Sally and Charlie Brown were saying, Isn't he the cutest thing? And Charlie Brown says, Fastest blanket in the West. <laughs> anyway, once they finally arrived, they wound up going inside their tents, you know, just to set up all their beds and everything. While Pepper and Patty and the rest of the girls were just doing their secret ballots, basically coming up with their own votes. That's more of a democratically way. Yeah, I know. It's like they wanted to become more into politics that would probably either agree or, or not. So, I know. It's, and yes, they, they've been doing this throughout the entire film. Really just using their secret ballots, you know, voting against others or uh, other things and so on and so forth. And yeah, it, it gets even worse when they started doing this to the boys. Yeah, I mean, they deserve better than that. And of course, Pepper Patty was stupid enough to do that. Well, we'll get to that later. They're already uh, setting up their beds, you know, already dealing with all, all this other stuff, such as making the wallets, you know, having some lunch and, or dinner or whatever. And they're about to ready to go to bed. Yeah, which I know Pepper and Patty had a water bed, and Snoopy was trying to 
go out there and kiss everybody goodnight and, uh, until suddenly the water bed started going out of control. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was funny. But then after that, um, once they got up at, at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, which apparently they, you know, I know Franklin and, and Sally was having trouble with the schedule because of they started using the military time. So was, I know. Anyway, they they were getting ready to to deal with uh, physical training, yeah, you know, which is called PT, so, yeah, you know, basically like physical education. You know, doing push-ups and sit-ups and all that. And then later they started going on doing all these games, you know, such as uh, the tug of war, as I mentioned, and um, the potato, you know, jumping around, hopping around on the potato bags. So once they were doing all these activities and everything, Charlie Brown, uh, along with Linus, Schroeder, Franklin, as well as Snoopy and Woodstock, Peppermint Patty, Sally, Lucy, and Marcy, were already setting up for the river raft race by working on their rafts. Meanwhile, they spotted the bullies by using their speedboat that has radars and all this other equipment that they use so they can go around, you know, racing for what they got. So, of course, they're going to go around cheating against them. Yeah, because they always keep, you know, cheering them on and saying, we're number one. We're number one. Yay. Ugh. And once they finally went into the river, you know, the bullies themselves have started to cheat on every single level by starting up their boat, you know, with the motor, you know, going completely fast after it started you know, breaking down. And then, I know, by, by the time they started going... Since they're starting to speed up past those two, <laughs> they wound up heading straight to the dock. And yeah, all of the games were smiling at them for what they're doing. Something stupid. Yeah, and then Pepper and Patty once again continuing with the secret ballots and all that. And they were wasting against time and, and all their lives until suddenly a, a huge storm was starting to get right past their path. Yeah, because they wound up. They're, the group itself winds up in, into different obstacles, such as getting lost, you know, stranded, was right beneath their path, you know, a lot of blizzards, and and they, of course they're being sabotaged by the bullies themselves because they keep stealing their air, and they keep trashing their rafts all the way around. Yeah, they're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> and all they're doing is cheating, so then they want to you know, losing at any chance they got. So after all of this had happened, Snoopy winds up getting lost with Woodstock and they're trying to find their way to search for them tirelessly until all of a sudden, after all this time, they finally found each other. Yeah, Charlie Brown and the rest of the gang, as well as Pepper and Patty, were trying to find Snoopy and Woodstock as well. While Charlie Brown, he winds up finding a cabin right right beneath the woods and Pepper and Patty did the same thing afterwards I mean even though they stayed over at night and already feeling very scared that there's lions, bears, and tigers around there in the area well they finally found the cabin and you know Charlie Brown was already setting up for dinner which turned out to be cold cereal you know, Pepper and Patty got furious about that and then all of a sudden you know they were playing some music and then suddenly Snoopy and Woodstock had finally came, you know, after being <laughs> almost stuck in the wilderness. You know, getting caught by that, that huge tire that they wanted on. And it, it was rolling around into the, the train tracks. And once they're inside the cabin, they wound up dancing to the music. And, and then, while well, later on they started singing the song, She'll be coming around the mountain where she comes. That's sort of way. Then after that, you know, once again, which I'm going to mention now, Pepper and Patty started to mention something completely stupid by using the secret ballots to have the boys stay outside in a cold, freezing air 
because you know it was going to be snowing later on. Well, the girls wound up staying inside the cabin, you know, already feeling, you know, completely warm inside. Oh, God, I feel like I want to smack them every chance they got. What were they thinking? Yeah, but to make matters worse, though, you know, she's doing exactly the same thing, only this time, you know, they want to believe in them behind, already, you know, in the freezing cold water. Yeah, it's just, that, that's just so messed up. Yeah. So anyway, once the whole thing got settled, um, Charlie Brown wants up becoming the leader of the pack. You know, since the bullies had messed up their rafts. So Prepper and Patty had offered him to become the leader. And yeah, everything was going so well until suddenly the bullies started putting all these signs up and all this other bullshit and, and all this other crap and and yeah, everybody is is already in trouble. They started going straight down to the to the streamline, and they want to get stuck inside the the windmill. And then and Charlie Bell went up and got grabbed that stick that the bullies had pulled in. You know, they saved their lives. Yeah, even though <laughs> they give sort of a frankless task. Yeah, mostly because Lucy's being a bitch by telling them. Thanks to Charlie Brown. Yeah, when it wasn't really his fault. He saved their lives. Yeah. Oh, I also forgot to mention, even before all of this had happened, yeah, they wound up uh, getting near that one sign where where it says Blasted Only, which is on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning, where it's, yeah, where all the rocks are coming right all the way down. Yeah, because I know they went on the wrong way, and and yeah, the girls started blaming on Charlie Brown because of that. That's so stupid. It wasn't even his fault. It's the bullies. So anyway, they, they finally went straight to all the other disasters as it went along. And suddenly they went straight into the waterfall. In which I know the bullies had went in first. And then later, Snoopy and Woodstock. And then finally, them. <laughs> yeah. But at least they finally went ahead of them, so... <laughs> And then, and the only way they could try to go all the way just to pass Snoopy and Woodstock is to have Charlie Brown using his leadership and, and his technique to finally start paddling, you know, making all of those contacts in, or, in order to finally have the girls, you know, stand under while the boys started paddling just so they can get to the finish line. And when they finally did, suddenly... You know, Pepper and Patty did another stupid thing, along with the girls, by cheering them on, by j jumping for joy that they're going to make it, till suddenly the boys started getting knocked over. <sighs> I know. What is wrong with them? Even worse, the bullies had catch up, and suddenly, you know, <laughs> their boat started to leak, and then they're already they're trying to stop them, you know, Snoopy and Woodstock and everything, and then you know what happens after that. Which I'm not going to give too much away, but I guess I think we... <laughs> I think I almost did, but that's okay. But everything turned out okay, and then... And then as the movie ends, you know, once again, Charlie Brown getting left behind on the bus. So he wants up with Snoopy and Woodstock again on the motorcycle bike. And the credits have finally started to show up. And then, with all these luscious colors and everything, and it's over. And, yep, it's, it became one of my favorite movies of all time, right next to a boy named Charlie Brown, and I really enjoyed it. And I love how everything was turning out, as it seems. It was definitely a lot different from the first two films. I mean, I know the bullies were assholes, so that's true. Um, especially their cat, uh, Brutus. One of my favorite scenes is when Snoopy did punch Brutus in the face. <laughs> when Buddhist was about to attack Woodstock on that one scene. And it was kind of sad that you know, all of them started getting lost and they're trying to find their ways to find them after a, a huge storm you know, fall beneath their path. Although, I had to say, when I first saw that one scene where Snoopy was trying so hard to find Woodstock all the way around the woods by howling, you know, there was one scene that I, I believe they actually cut this out from its original VHS release. 
and, and I know TB Aaron's had the same problem too. But there was another shot where you saw, you know, Woodstock already, you know, making a boat of himself uh, by using broom straws. And, yeah, because he always, yeah, using all these net straws and, and he was freezing to death, you know, while he's riding in. So now you spotted Woodstock, you know, before he's being chased by Brutus the Cat. And I remember that one funny scene in the movie that I really liked was when Snoopy actually uh, <laughs> was inside the cabin. And for some reason, he spotted someone knocking at the door. And it turns out to be, you guessed it, a bear. <laughs> yeah, Snoopy was already scared. And he shut down the door and then, and then suddenly, <laughs> and then the bear was like running so fast. <laughs> Oh man, that was just hilarious. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I, there was a lot of great scenes in this movie that I really enjoy. And I just never got tired of it. I, mean, I love how Sally's always complaining about, you know, about all the things that's happening. Because once she finally gets to camp, you know, she's just, she's just scared. And other times she's just, she wants to be with Linus. And, and then suddenly she's talking about, you know, once she was already at camp, she was saying something about, I was wrong. I haven't been hijacked. I've been drafted. <laughs> yeah, that was in the beginning when, when they were already at their arrival. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, a, it's a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. You know, there was a lot of good stuff that they were going for. And, you know, it, it's... Definitely the perfect summer camp movie I would watch. It's definitely right up there with Heavyweights and all the rest of the summer camp movies. So I was really interested in, in watching a film like this because being a, a huge Charlie Brown fan, I always enjoy, you know, looking out on all the adventures that they're doing. I guess you could say this is sort of like in the take of, of their previous uh, summer camp special called It Was a Short Summer, Charlie Brown, which came out in 1968 so it was a pretty rare task that they were going for so this wasn't the first time they ever done some summer camp I mean yes the special and, and all the comics and all this other stuff they've been going to summer camp but it's awesome to see what this movie was going for because it's basically focusing more on the race than just uh, <laughs> than just the summer camp alone yeah. so anyway so it's cool but you definitely should check this movie out because it's really awesome. It's one of the best movies out of all Charlie Brown films. I mean, it's too bad it wasn't a box office success, but it's, well, <laughs> what can you do? So now we're going to get ready to the, the fourth and final sequel to the first three films known as Bon Voyage Charlie Brown and Don't Come Back. And I'll try to review that one later. Uh, once I get to it. It's not on DVD yet, but it will be someday. So, I hope you're looking forward to seeing this because I can't wait for it as well. So anyway, I give Race for Your Life Charlie Brown a solid five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.